I want to start off by saying congratulations to everyone who played my lineup tonight. Um, your lineup was a winner in all f all formats, unless it was a head-to-head, -head, of course, and the other person had more than 287, but 287 is pretty good, man. Um, if you've been listening since day one, you know that I've been waiting for Markeith Morris to sit out. Um, I, the last time he was questionable, he played. But when he was questionable, I said to everyone, listen, if Markeith Morris misses a game, you got to get Jason Smith in there. I watch a lot of basketball. I don't look at spreadsheets. I don't look at stats. I look at these players, how they play when they get opportunity. And Jason Smith is one of those players. He's behind Mahinmi. And um, he don't really get minutes. He gets a couple DMPs when the, everyone else is healthy because they got to get Ubre Bogdanovich. So whenever he gets minutes, he goes crazy. And the last couple of times, he went crazy. So I feel bad for those who weren't at the live show because that's when I made the last-minute call on my lineup. I took out um, Quincy AC, and I swore up and down I was not going to touch my lineup, but... When I saw Markeith Morris wasn't playing, and if those who had the show, they heard me say I felt like a crackhead. I was itching to take out AC and put in Jason Smith. And then with two minutes before lock, I gave in. I changed my lineup. I threw Jason Smith in because it was like a no-brainer. And then I thought that his ownership would be much higher because, for example, let's go to that main. Where's that $4? contest that everyone likes to play he was only like two percent owned, not two percent eight percent owned. he was eight percent owned. he gave me 12 to 13 times value for his price i could not believe that he was eight percent owned. i thought he would have been high because sometimes i make plays that's like no brainers people say to me it don't take a, it, don't, it doesn't take a genius to know that you got to put jason smith in i've heard that the other day when i put in david lee and I was telling people that I'm I'm I know how to call these games. That one dude said to me, it, it doesn't take a genius to know that if Lamarcus Aldridge is out, put in David Lee. So tonight, Jason Smith was only eight percent on during the live show. I went crazy about him. So far, every time I go crazy, I went crazy about Mahinmi the night when he put up over ten times value. I went crazy about David Lee the next night after that. Went crazy over Jason Smith, right? Now, we can talk about this other chart guy a little bit. Marcus Smart. He didn't hit six times value, by the way. He hit 5.87 times value, if that matters. But he sucks, man. You're getting the starting lineup. And 55% of DFS jump on your bandwagon to have a good game. And you shoot the ball like, just like I said, he can't shoot. Let's go look at his stats. I'm very interested to see his stats because I know he can't shoot and I told people that he's good for defense and what he did he got like three or four steals because he's a defender that's what he does he got like three to four steals I told people that would happen um, I'm not a psychic man I'm just good at this game so a lot of times when I more times than not I'm right and I will be right it's not boasting it's not cockiness um, I'm very nonchalant to, to be honest but when I'm confident about something it's a serious thing you know what I mean um, so even AC hit about eight times value. Marcus Smart shot the ball three for 14 today, guys. Three for 14. I pointed that out pregame that he wasn't going to do anything. Al Horford, I'm happy I took him out. And, and I'm so gifted at this thing, man. I literally upgraded every position and every upgrade except for Bradley Beal did me well, right? Uh, I would have did better with Covington, but big deal. It happens. I took Vucevic, and I knew Whiteside was going to do what he did. Those two were pretty much locked in for me when I made my new lineup. Um, Rozier didn't really. I'm a little bit disappointed. The game would have been a um, better game if Rozier would have started, um, but whatever. TJ Warren had me worried at halftime. He had like nine fantasy points, then he went off in the second half. When I saw that game and I saw them both going off, him and Vucevic, I said, yes, yes, I'm going to win tonight. So... It was a winner. I was worried. I thought I would have had to make a deposit because I took a lot of money out and I played the rest of the money that I had. I wanted to play more, but I didn't want to make a deposit. I take pride knowing that I haven't made a deposit in about 
four months. I'm not lying. About four months since I made a deposit into this site, and I take pride. So I was so confident I wanted to make a deposit, but I said, nah. So I betted 15 19 39 $40, $48, and I won 84 So that's good stuff. I won in every contest except for the free ones. I can't win in those. And um, <clears throat> the 10 times booster, I'm always in the top 10, top 15. And every now and then I hit it. But in order for me to lose here, I have to go 10 days without hitting it. And I hit it at least twice every 10 days or more. So I'm pretty good with the 10-time boost. I love it. So this is it. This is the recap for tonight. Um, some other stuff I wanted to talk about before I go into tomorrow's videos. Let's look at some other scores. Oh, and Ted Okumpo. That was, it was, that was the other thing that I said I would touch on at the end of the night. Marcus Smart and Antero Kumpo. Everybody was all over Antero Kumpo. And what did I say? If I pay up tonight, it's James Harden and Anthony Davis. And those two were in the top. Those were two of the top three plays for the night. So I know this game, guys. When I say things like that, it's, it's for a reason. I said if I pay up tonight, James Harden and Anthony Davis, two of the top three. Solomon Hill, 54 points. That's fake. That happens. Um... But other than that, Anthony Davis and Harden were the other top players for the night. So that was a good call. Um, Hassan Whiteside, we spoke about Drogic. And Ted Okumpo had 46 for 10K. That's four times value. And, and I'm not going to say I told you, so I don't want to rub it in for those who played him. Jay Crowder, I was kind of, I, I felt it. I knew it was going to be a Crowder day. I knew it, but... It happens. I didn't want to change my lineup, and I'm happy I won money at the end of the night. Um, Al Horford did okay. So if I had, if I didn't or did take him out, he did fine. Um, who else was I big on? I was big on that Etwan Moore kid. I wonder how he did. Um, thank God I got off Rondo from last night. Um, Bradley Beal with a big snowflake. That was the big, big disappointment for the night, really. It was Bradley Beal. Rondo, Snowflake, 24.5. I wasn't really feeling Rondo as I slept on it, and I woke up, and the day went along. I really didn't like Rondo. Um, Noel didn't do well. TLC did well for 3,500. Yeah, he hit value. So shout out to everybody that's big on TLC. Left eye, chili, and T bars. <laughs> That's what one person said. Each one more hit value too. So if I took out um that kid and played each one more, I would have had nine more points. Each one more did twenty two point two five today. Look at that. He was in the fire, and I, and I and I called it. I'm going through the list right now, looking at the top plays. So trust me, guys. Um, subscribe, like, hit the bell so you get updates. And let me help you be the best fantasy player, man. I, every night I do this, and people who's been following me since day one, they are not disappointed. You can look in the comments section for any of my videos. You're just going to see good feedback. Um, a lot of people online do this. For those that have contests, I enter their contests, and tonight I did better than both of those guys that have contests. I'm not going to call anybody out. I'm not going to get all crazy now, but... I entered two contests of people who do YouTube videos that have a contest on DraftKings. And I scored higher than both of them today. All right. So, and I love their advice. They kind of mentored me into um, playing this sport and helped me come up with my system. So I don't take any credit from them. I like to say that the, the student is always better than the teacher in the long run. That's a life learned lesson as well. So, um, Gonna get into tonight's slate, and you know, for those who's been with me, they know my concept and my um, principle, my system. And for those who are new to the video or seeing it for the first time, I'm gonna kind of go through it once I get the slate open. So, I shoot for six time value for all the players that I pick. All right, I have three criterias. You have to be able to get me six times value. I call it capability. You have to show me consistency of hitting six times value for your price that is currently listed for. I have to see some consistency in order to consider you. The next thing is upside. So if I have eight, 10 players and they all fit the system, I'm going to choose the top eight with the most upside. So if you follow that system, what's going to happen is six times 50 is 300. 
you're either going to score a little above 300 or a little below 300. And most nights, that's pretty much where we land. And it's, it's, a, it's a system that works. Now, tonight, I'm not going to say the system was perfect because without that Jason Smith late change, I wouldn't have done as well. But if you stick, if you stick to a way, even in life, man, if you stick to living a certain way and you stay firm on it, sometimes, you know, the, the dice is rolling in your favor. When you start playing around and doing things differently, it messes with the probability. And that's when things get crazy. So in order to win sometimes, you just got to stay constant. Remain constant. Let everybody mess with the variables. You keep your constant, and you'll um, persevere in the end. And I'm a firm believer of that, all right? So to get into tonight's slate, Washington versus Charlotte. Oh, man, it's doing that weird thing. Got to refresh the screen real quick. Washington versus Charlotte. Um, Plumlee remains out. Johnny O'Brien was battling, I know, an ankle issue. Ramon Sessions is out. And let's see what's going on with Batum. I'm going to start on the Charlotte side of the ball, okay? Um, so for point guard, I'm not going to play Kemba Walker. He's too inconsistent, very inconsistent. He gave me 13 the last game. The game before that, the two games before that were good, but then he's 29. And for that price, you don't want to get stuck on one of those 29 games. Against Washington, he's played two games, averaging 35.4 minutes, and he's only averaging 36 points. So I'm not going to consider Kemba Walker. He's not consistent at six times value for his price, and he really doesn't have any upside for all that matter as well. Right? So let's see what's going on with Nick Batum. He missed the last two games with serious migraines. His CAT scan was negative. However... Um, he remains without a timetable for a return. His next opportunity is Saturday. Um, I don't think I'll play Batum even if he does play anyway. For 7K, I'm expecting 40s, and he doesn't do that consistent. He'll go 44 to 36. Um, his floor is pretty safe sometimes, but then he give you 18 and 22. So I, I consider Batum a little risky. Jeremy Lamb got starter minutes and only gave us 19. Um... This is not a good matchup. Um, small forward. Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Last game was 14. The one before that was 31. The one before that was 23. So he's not showing me six times value consistently. I'm going to stay away from him. Uh, Marvin Williams was showing consistency. Then he gave me a 17 the last game. The game before that it was 47-50-48. Because of the um, recent success his price went to 6.5 Marvin Williams will need to give us the, um, 40 and um, because of that 17 point and um, not just that because I don't really chase one game that's another thing you want to look at trends over more than one game right so a game like tomorrow will be the perfect opportunity to get back on Marvin Williams if, he, if we know him for being consistent he'll get right back to things but what concerns me more than anything else is that Frank Comiskey is back. So Marvin Williams' um, usage decreases, and Frank could be sneaky for that price, 5500 We know before he got hurt, he was 72 69 65 These are other things to look at. So he was caught getting 40s consistently, went out with an injury, missed um, a couple weeks, and then came back. To play now, he's 5,700. In two games, he's played 20 minutes against this team, and he's averaging about a point per minute. So if he gets 30 minutes tomorrow, I think he can hit value. Uh, I guess he could, he's someone I would like to consider. I think is he's sneaky for that price tomorrow. But more than him, I like Cody Zeller. I think Cody Zeller, um, in two games playing 30 minutes, he's averaging 30 fantasy points against this team. He needs about 30 to meet my system he has not been doing that consistently in 40 minutes he only had 25 that was a hard matchup but in 30 minutes against Orlando in a good matchup he only had 20 so Cody Zeller is risky I wouldn't really risk it on the Washington side of the ball John Wall was a little banged up and they said that his minutes would be um, monitored he went off for like 20 assists today and his total points was, um, let's see what his fantasy points was, John Wall. 50. 
for that price, um, we need about mid fifties. Uh, we know that he does that consistently, right? 50, 56, 53, 51, 60, 60. And the upside for 60 is there against this team. Two games, he's put up 50. I think John Walker penetrate, um, 50 value easy again tomorrow. I think John Wall is definitely worth some consideration. His price is down to the lowest it has been. That's another thing you want to look at. When these players' prices start to come down for no reason, he went from 10, 11K, 10K, 9.7 last, um, 9.7, now he's 9.3. They almost have John Wall in the 8,000s. I think it's because of the matchup, which I don't think is that bad. And it says that it's a bad matchup, but... Um, and also is, um, I think something else I have to do with it is that he was shaken up and questionable for today. And he ended up playing. He has some foot issues, so they might just be cautious with him tomorrow. But he did make a comment that, um, the NBA is being soft on players. Let's go to the website. I read something and it's in the. John Wall says something about players resting, like he doesn't like it. So, Wall, NBA softer for teams resting healthy players. So, um, I know he's a guy that doesn't like to rest. He went through his pain today. He's definitely someone to consider. I'm going to hold on to him for now. Um, Bradley Bill, I got a personal thing with him. He went out today and he didn't give me what he what I needed. He needs mid four, upper 40s for that price to be six time. And he hasn't been doing that consistent. He's been in the 30s consistently. Today he was in the 20s, I think. So we are off that. Um, not playing any of the backups. Otto Porter did okay today, but he needs about 40. Uh, he hasn't been doing that consistently as well, so I'm going to stay away from him. In two games against them, he played 35 minutes, and he's averaging just about 30, which will not satisfy us tomorrow. So we're going to leave Otto Porter alone. And I don't play bench players. Bogdanovich needs about 27. And he hasn't done that consistently. He has 17 and 14 in his last three games. So I'm going to leave him alone. Um, Jason Smith. Um, Markeith Morris. I don't know if he's going to play. So he will not play Friday. He hoped to recover enough during the afternoon to play. But that won't be the case. So consider the forward day to day as the Wizards play on the first night of a back-to-back. Um, Jason Smith will get the start in his absence. So with them winning the way that they did today and Jason Smith playing so well, I'm going to put Jason Smith here again for tonight, assuming that um, Markeith Morris misses tomorrow. And um, I'm going to leave him there all night. I'm not going to move him. But, you know, I do the updated lineups tomorrow. So if Markeith ends up playing, I might have to take out Jason Smith. Um... If you are a firm believer in playing my lineups and you're concerned that my lineup is going to change the next day, I cannot guarantee that I'm going to play a lineup at midnight the night before because a lot of injury news comes out that makes other players more interesting. I strongly advise that you try to make the live show pre-lock. I know during the week it's hard because people work, and if you get out of work at 5 o'clock, to get home, and if you have a family and whatnot, it's just hard to make the pre-lock show. If you have a Twitter, follow me. Today, my last change for Jason Smith was literally at 6.58. There were no way, besides being at the last at the live show, that I would have been able to get that out to all the people who um, needs my lineup. So, um, I think the best thing to do is get a Twitter, follow it. Every change, I update Twitter. Um, if you send me a message on Twitter, I like to respond to the messages with my lineups and whatnot. People can say I've been doing that. And um, um, just comment, comment the video that you want my email address, and I'll I'll give it to you, and then we could communicate via email as well. Um, a couple people have done that as well. So I just can't guarantee that I'm going to play this lineup tomorrow and I'm making it at night. My system works, but still, if value comes because of injuries, I have to make that adjustment, all right? Um, so Marching Gortat needs about 30, and he has not been consistently there. He's been 20 and 13 in his last two. 
So I'm going to stay away from marching. All right. And that's that game. Moving on to the Cleveland Clippers. Kyrie Irving is questionable. Um, if Kyrie Irving does not play, please don't jump on a Deron Williams bandwagon. Okay, guys. Certain value play I love, like Jason Smith. Jason Smith tonight. Love that. Certain bandwagon plays I do not love. Like Marcus Smart. So it's not like I'm against playing the backup play. I'm all about it. But certain value play is just not worth chasing. And I've been right on every prediction that I've made when it comes to swapping and value, okay? Except for that one night with the um, Golden State Spurs game. And in a situation where they're resting so many players, it's hard to predict. It's like fishing for value. And you don't know which fish you're going to pull out, if you're going to pull out the good one or not. So... For the most part, I'm pretty accurate when it comes to value plays, right? Um, This game here, let's break it down. On the Cleveland side of the ball, Kyrie Irving is going through something. If he does play, I'm not interested in him. If he doesn't, I'm still not interested. He needs about mid-40s. Mid in the last two games, he's had 32 and 37. With Kevin Love back, his usage go back to where it was before. And um, Kyrie Irving is talented, man. I've been watching these games, and this guy, his jump shot is wet. He can shoot. He's crossing people over. Look at his field goal percentage. For somebody shooting 20-something shots, shooting 60, 40 to 60% from the field, taking that many shots, that's pretty impressive, man. Um, you know, he has upside. He's consistently in the 30s, though, and I'm not with that. And the Clippers are a team that slows the game down so much. Chris Paul kind of tried to take over. In 33 minutes, he only put up 32 fantasy points. Just not something I'm interested in tomorrow. And I'm not into his backups. Even if Deron start, I'm not feeling that. Because LeBron is going to take over most of the point guard duties anyway. Um, J.R. Smith, he's about 24. 23, 22, and 7. So, I guess you could say he's been close to his um, six-time value. The only thing is, it's the Clippers for one. For two, he doesn't show the upside to get you into the 30s. I know that he can, but... He's like the fourth option on his team, so I'm not really going to consider him and, sh and gamble. Um, and his backups, I won't consider LeBron. Not in this matchup. I know that um, Clippers give it up a lot to small forwards. But the pace of the game is just going to be so slow. And the Cavs have been doing good in slow-paced game because they speed it up. They run. They run them up the court. They force that team to play at their pace. LeBron needs about 66. In his last four games, he's hit 60 twice. He's just so expensive, man. Um, he's worth considering because he's cause he's been um consistent in the 60s. So I can't say I'm not gonna consider him, right? Because he he fits the system. He really does. So let's pull LeBron James over. Um, Kevin Love. His minutes are being monitored right now. Um. So I'll be careful with Kevin Love. Um, continuing here now. Um, Tristan Thompson is just too inconsistent. He gets you thirteen or twenty-three for his price. We need mid to upper um twenties, and he hasn't done it consistently. So he doesn't fit the system on the Clippers side of the ball. Chris Paul. This is a good matchup for Chris Paul, actually. Um, he needs mid forties to make me happy tomorrow. And outside of one game against Milwaukee, he's been in the forties, and he has fifty size up, fifty point upside. And one game against this team, he only played twenty four minutes, and he's put up forty point five fantasy points. For some weird reason, um, I mean he fits the system. I'll pull over Chris Paul for now, but. The way the Cavs are playing, man, I think they're going to run them over. The Clippers are just not looking too good right now. And um, I think the Cavs have a field day tomorrow. It might be another blowout. I don't bank on blowouts, so that's why I'm going to consider Chris Paul. But another thing is don't predict a blowout and not pick players, okay? Don't do that. You'll miss out on some good value because you thought the game was going to be a blowout. Don't do that to yourself. Um... So, J.J. Reddick, inconsistent. He can get you 35 or he can get you 23 or 19. 
It's forty five hundred. We need more than that. Um, Ray Felton is not worth it. He's he's minimal price, but he's not getting minutes. Even with um, he's getting like fifteen minutes, giving you six eight fantasy points. You def definitely don't want that. Blake Griffin is just a tough matchup, but then Kevin Love and um Tristan Thompson, I think it'll, it'll be hard for him to find his game. We need about mid to upper forties in thirty minutes. He only put up thirty seven points the last time out, and he's been in the thirties and twenties, so he hasn't been consistently giving us what we need. So I'll leave Blake Griffin alone. Um, DeAndre Jordan, he's about forty. Um, in thirty minutes, he put up thirty points against this team. I don't think the rebounds are going to be there for him tonight. He had 15 rebounds the last time they played, which is good. But And he's been doing better at the free throw line. So let's see. He needs about 40. He has 50 and 60 point upside in good matchups. But matchups that are not good like Utah, Memphis, uh, Minnesota is a good one for him. Boston is a good one. He's a little too up and down, way up and down. He can get you 50 and then the night before that, 24. So, um, and the matchup is not one that I love. So, I will stay away from DeAndre Jordan as well tomorrow. And that's that game. Moving on to San Antonio versus Memphis. Tony Parker is still questionable. So, is DeJounte Murray. Starting on the San Antonio side of the ball. Um, Patty Mills can be interesting for this place. Um, when in the starting lineup, we need about mid-30s. And he's done that pretty consistently. I think his floor is safe if he starts. But um, he's worth consideration. He fits the system. I'll pull him over. I doubt that I can get to him, but I'll pull him over for now. Jonathan Simmons for 3,800. Kawhi Leonard is back. So the last game, he only got five minutes. I wouldn't really gamble. I like Ginobili. Ginobili is um, pretty solid around the 20 mark consistently, right? Look, so we need about for 22 from him. He, I mean, he's 2019, 20, 26, 37. Um, a lot of these games in the 30s are fake because Kawhi was out. There were resting players. LaMarcus was out. So I think he settles back into the bench role that he was in before that happened. Nine and seven points. And I think Ginobili should not be rostered. I'm going to leave him alone. Small forward. Kawhi Leonard needs 60 tomorrow. The last time Kawhi Leonard played, I said he was too much. He was 9,800, and he needed 60. He ended up getting 65 against Portland. Now, Memphis is a different team than Portland. They're going to really slow the ball down. And I'm going to stick to him being too expensive. He doesn't do that consistently, okay? Tua, uh, I can't say that because he's had three out of the last 10 games in the 60s and then two other games in the 50s. So, even if we get 55 from him, I think that's pretty decent at his price. Um, He's worth consideration. He fits the system. And um, I think he's a little expensive. I don't like picking guys for that price unless it's almost guaranteed. But it seems like Kawhi has been playing much better in his 60s most nights. He hasn't played them this season. So I, I don't have um something to see how he matches up. I just don't like it. I think the... I think this will be a slow, coach-driven, defensive game, but he fits the system, so I'm going to pull him over for now, okay? i got to stick to the system. I can't go against what I believe in, especially when it wins me money. Tonight, I stood firm. I didn't really mess with my lineup too much. I'd made one change at the um, live show, but it was obvious that that change needed to be made, and um, I won. The night before that, I changed my entire lineup and lost, so i got to stick to the system, all right? Marcus Aldridge for 6K. People say that's too cheap for him. Um, in 33 minutes, he put up 31 points. He needs about mid-30s. And he hasn't been consistently there. He's been at 33, then 25, then 27. So I will not trust LaMarcus Aldridge. Paul Gasol needs about 30. Same thing. He'll get you 41, then 23. So you're going to be gambling with your money, picking Paul Gasol. Not interested in it. On the Memphis side of the ball. Michael Conley has been playing very well. If we look at my system, he's consistently in the 40s and um, has some 50 upside. We need low 40s from him. It's hard to think that Michael Conley cannot get you into the 40s tomorrow. And 
hit six times value. In 35 minutes against this team, he's put up 33.5. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw him in. So let's see who. Um, I would say Patty Mills can come out and Conley can go in. All right. It's the upgrade. I'm all about upgrading. Um, shooting guard. I think Tony Allen is too cheap. We need about 22 from him. And he's been 23, 22, 21 in the last three. In the last game against them, he played 21 minutes and gave us 26 fantasy points. Um, he's. I think he'll be on Kawhi because he's their best defender. Kawhi's not known for turning the ball over, but um, I like Tony Allen tomorrow. And he fits the system, so he's in a good matchup. He fits the system. Why not play him? Um... Now, let's see what he does that gets him his value. Why does he? So, he can get you some steals. He can score a little bit. Some assists, some rebounds. He's well-rounded. He can fill it up. And uh, for so cheap, I don't think he'll tank your lineup, even if he doesn't do well. So, Tony Allen is worth consideration. He fits the system. Vince Carter needs the same thing. Mid-20s. He got 9 and 15 in his last two. So, he doesn't fit my program. Zach Randolph needs just about 30. Um, in the last three, his scores has been 15, 23, and 24. So we're not going to go there and waste our time. Mark Gasol needs about 40 to make me happy. The last three has been 50, 48, 35. Um, in the last game against them, he's played 33 minutes and put up 22. I'm going to stay away from Gasol against the Spurs. Um, and he he's had another day and he won me some money, but I don't like him tonight. Utah versus Chicago. Um, now, Robin Lopez. Anyway, let's look at injuries. Derek Favors out. Rodney Hood questionable. Cameron Payne out. We can start. I want to start on the Chicago side of the ball because Robin Lopez is $3,600. Right? To make value for that, you need about 22 fantasy points. He does not fit my system. He's had 13, 14 which shows that he can really sink you. And this is a difficult matchup for him, right? It's just hard for me to fade a start and center. Robin Lopez in one game played 38.2 minutes against this team. He put up 30.5 fantasy points. As I speak to you tonight, Robin Lopez went off for 39.25. He took about... I think 18 shots today. But this is a good matchup. Utah is not a good matchup, but I still think he's too cheap. I was looking at it earlier. He doesn't fit the system, so I might have to pass on him. But if he's going to be taking 16 shots, um, he already shown that he could put up double-digit rebounds against this team. So he's someone that has me itching like a crackhead to put in, but I'm going to stick to my system. I know he's dirt cheap, but the matchup isn't there. The consistency hasn't been there. There's no real good reason or rationale to get him in. Uh, he just had a good game, but I'm not one to really chase single games. So I'm going to trust the the points that he'll get something low tomorrow. And a lot of people are going to chase it. A lot of people are going to see it thinking, oh, Dwayne Wade is out. They're looking for Rob Lowe for more product production. So I see a lot of people chasing it tomorrow, that single game total with a 36. Just like I was almost chasing it, like, oh, he's too cheap. And he's in a bad matchup, so don't don't feel like you have to chase that. Rondo disappointed today, and this is a difficult matchup. I'm not in love with Rondo. He needs about 36. In the last two, he's had 42 and 39, but today, as I speak to you, let me look at my list. Today, Rondo's total was... If his total was value, I'll put him in. Because then he fits the criteria. But I don't think Rondo hit value today. Let's look at it here. Um, Six points, 10 assists. So that's 15, 21, and 5 is 26. And he turned also 25. Mid-20s is what Rondo gave us today. So that's too volatile. He can go up and down. I don't like that. Um... Jimmy Butler had a good game today, but then he's been 27. Then he'll give you 56, then 22. Don't chase a single good game. I'll leave him alone. Denzel Valentine was everybody's favorite. 
Um, I think he did pretty well, didn't he? What did he do today? So 11 and 5 is 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 for 4,400, 4,200. That's not what you want. Zipsa seems to be getting the start. And he did a little better. Um, 8 plus 3 is 11. So about 20 for the minimum so he hit value to say the least and if they're going to be going with him i'm still not interested he has to show some more consistency before i get interested meritage on the other hand um i can be interested he needs about 24 mid 20s he's done it two games in a row and i know today he had another game where he hit value for his price 15 25 26 27 20 29 30 31 he was in the 30s today meritage so the thing is, um, you know, I don't. He fits the system. You gotta consider him. And let's see what our forward. Um, he's cheaper than Cam, so I can take out Cam for um, Miritich. That's fair. Even in a bad matchup, I won't be scared of it. He's gonna be getting so much minutes. He got um, he's thirty two minutes off the bench. That says a lot. And um, even the other games, twenty eight. A point per minute. I think he's a good point per minute guy. Um, initially, he was just relying on his shots, but it seems like the team got him more crashing the board. He's giving out some assists. He's playing defense. Um, oh, three blocks. So he was high in the um, 30s today. He's playing defense. He's doing it all. So Miltich deserves the mention based on my little system that I got. There's no reason not to play him. All right, on the Utah side of the ball, George Hill has been up and down. He needs 36. He had 16 and 24 in the last two games, so I'm going to X him out. Rodney Hood, what's his story? He's, he has some knee issues, so he's banged up. Let's not even waste time on that. Gordon Hayward needs about 42. He can get you 26, then he can get you 47. He can get you 37, then he can get you 14. Too risky, and the matchup is not superb um i would take risk on gordon hayward and i've had take risks and been successful doing it but um just not tonight i'm not feeling it um they don't have a clear cut power forward i think they've been giving the minutes to hayward and kind of going small who to go be i love tomorrow only because it's against the chicago which is a good matchup he needs 40 to make me satisfied the last game he played he had to play 40 minutes but he got us 40 points and he's been consistent. 53, 36 is close enough. That's five times value. Then 41, 48, 58. So he definitely fits our system. Um, so I'm going to take out Kawhi because he's so expensive in a slow matchup. All right. I'm going to put Jason Smith where Kawhi Leonard is. Jason Smith for forward. And then I'm going to go gold beer for the center. That's the decision that I thought was best. Uh, moving forward on Utah. And that's it for Utah and Chicago. I broke down that slate, right? Did I do Chicago? Yeah. Jimmy Butler. Yeah, I did. I did. Now, Houston versus Denver. I like this game a lot. I think it's going to stay close. I think both teams are going to compete. And I'm in love with this game so much. Let's see who are out. Um, Gallinari and Chandler has been ruled out again. So automatically, I like Will Barton. I did something dumb the other day. I took him out knowing that he was in a good spot. First of all, the, he's not going to see Patrick Beverly, and that's the only person that I think will pester him around. Now, for his price, he needs 40. So I call it about just about 40, low 40s. In 33 minutes, he put up 34.8. I wondered if he started. Let's look, see if he started that game. Nuggets versus Rockets. Nuggets versus Rockets. Um, I think he was off the bench. Was it a blowout? So it was a blowout, and he probably came in for garbage time. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, he started. He started that game. They got blown out um, early in the season. 
Wisdom Chandler had a good game as well. So he only played he played thirty three minutes. He shot seven for sixteen. He got some rebounds, some assists. He had seventeen points. The thing with Barton, right, is that he's gonna be coming off the bench anyway, but he'll still get starters minutes. And blow out or not, he's out there. Because we saw that they were blowing out the Clippers, and that's when he got most of his points. He went off. He went crazy. And if it's close, they're going to leave him in for the offense anyway. So I love Barton tomorrow. Um, it's just for that price. He doesn't really fit my system, right? Because if he needs 42, I mean, he got 50 and 37, but an 8, 18, 20. I don't, I, he doesn't fit my system. As much as I love him, when his price was a little better, his price was what? The day before. For 5,300, yes. I could say that's better, but to jump, what's that, $1,600 in one game because you come off the bench, and he comes off the bench. I don't love Barton. I'm not really going to stress Barton tomorrow. I'm going to leave him alone. I, li- I like him off of first look, but when I get into the system and analyze the numbers and take a better look at him, he's way too expensive for tomorrow. You want to leave him alone now. Leave him alone. Um, moving forward on Denver. Um, Jamal Murray, he needs 30. He hasn't done that consistently. He give you 22, then 35, then 22, then 16. So he doesn't fit. Jameer Nelson had a good game last time. He needs 24. And, I'm, and I can be interested in some Jameer Nelson. It's just that in 18 minutes against this team, he put out 8.8 points. His upside, I don't think, is great with all the other people around him. And Patrick Beverly is a, is a force. So I'm going to stay away from him for that. Um, now, I think they should have Mason Plumley be forward eligible because he's playing forward. That's what he's playing. The team uses him as a forward. If I look at his depth chart, I'm pretty sure he's... They don't have him as a forward, but the team's... They're not going to start for Reed. And they might. But I like Mason Plumlee either way. The reason is he fits my system. 38, 37, 35. Had a game off, which is pretty fake. You don't want to hold that against him. In an up pace game like this, 40, 33. This fits his game, man. This guy's going to be running up and down. He's going to be jumping over people, getting rebounds, assists, blocks. I'm watching him play, man. This guy's full of energy. He loves the, the spot that he's in. Denver seems to like him. They're giving him the green light. You got to have Mason Plumlee tomorrow. I love Mason Plumlee tomorrow. So let's see how we can incorporate him, right? I love John Wall for the price, but on the back-to-back, I'm not taking out John Wall. Not for a 9K John Wall that's getting 50s consistently. You can pretty much rule him in for 50. Look at the game he had tonight. And I don't think he played that much minutes. I know they wanted to have him on a um, restriction. Let's see how many minutes. That might be. I think if he plays today without any setbacks, then he's good to go tomorrow. He's not. He's like one of those guys that don't really need the um, the rest, right? So John Wall today. Played. 33 minutes. They said they wanted to limit his minutes. I don't know how he ended up playing that much. But that's that's just to tell you the type of player that he is. So I'm going to hold on to John Wall, um, which means that either Chris Paul or Mike Conley have to go, right? So Chris Paul, we know, um, needs pretty much 48 to 50. So I would say Mike Conley. I'm going to get rid of Chris Paul because, for one, Mike Conley is cheaper. And for two, Mike Conley... Only needs low 40s, which I think he can penetrate easily. And um, the upside is always there for Conley as well. They're, he's playing well right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put Conley in the guard spot. And then I'm going to go Plumlee as my center for tomorrow. So I love how the lineup is looking right now, man. If I, can, I have LeBron, John Wall, Gobert. I don't know if Gobert is a lock. Let's see Gobert real quick. So 40 points against them already. He's been around 40 consistent. I got I got to consider Gobert. I have to. I cannot not consider Gobert. It's just that every now and then he, he won't score, you know. Um, He'll give you like 12, 11. Yeah, Gobert is pretty good. So 
let's continue and see how how else we want to tweak this. I know Jason Smith, if Markeith is out tomorrow, opens up a lot of good value for us. Um, moving on with Denver. Um, Joe Kitch needs about uh, mid sixties to hit value for this price. Anywhere in the upper fifties and sixties. The only thing is he can get you. He hasn't even scored sixty anyway. Only once in his last ten. And he can land you in the 30s and the 40s. So I'll be careful with Jokic tomorrow. On the Houston side of the ball. Um, I want to go back to the last game they played. Rockets versus Nuggets. I like Patrick Beverly. I think it's a good matchup for him. It's just that he's not the true point guard. And he's not. He's. You know. it's hard. I like Beverly. Man. I think he needs mid 30s. To hit value for this price tomorrow. And he hasn't been mid-30s consistently in his last four. So he doesn't fit my system. I'm happy that was easy because I think he's in a good spot. But something's telling me to not play him tomorrow. Lou William. Um, let me see something very quick. Comes off the bench. I don't like roster and bench players for Lou Williams' sake. It is a good matchup for him. A pace. Shoot, shootout type style lineup. So Lou William has potential to do good tomorrow. Yeah, Pat Beverly played 28 minutes and barely did anything in the last time they played. So Lou Williams um is interesting. I think Lou Williams against the Nuggets is what you want. In two games, he only played 27 points. And he's averaging like 43 fantasy points. He needs about 35 to make us happy. It's just that he hasn't been consistent. Against his old team, yes, he went off. What did Lou Will do today? And who did they play today? They played Pelicans, which is a team that Lou Williams should be able to come out and do it. The Pelicans don't play like the um the Nuggets. The Nuggets is a team that's gonna be high scoring. This game right here is gonna look like the all star game. And I think a lot of opportunities for um Lou Williams. It's just that he doesn't really fit the system, right? Today he played um, 30 minutes, a lot. And he was 4 for 12. So if his shots doesn't fall, then we get disappointed, right? So although a lot of shots will be there for him tomorrow, who's to guarantee that those shots are going to drop? I'm going to stay away from Lou Will. Um, James Harden, he's about 70s to hit value. He did 80s today. But then he can get you into the 50s. And 50s for this price is like, what, 4 to 5 times value? So the risk is there, man. Um, I know he had a good game today, but I'm not chasing it. In 33 minutes against Denver, he only put up 44 points. Um, just too much. He's like the top price player, and there's other players that I like as well. So I'm having a hard time thinking that I can get to um, James Harden tomorrow for that price. Ariza is inconsistent. He needs 30. And um, 30 and then 26. 34 and 21. So that's two seesaw up and down for me. Same could be said for Ryan Anderson. We need about 25 to 27. And the last game, he put out four, then 28, 29, then 10. So he's way too up and down as well. Clint Compella has been pretty stable. He needs 30. It's just that um, Denver low-key turned into another twin tower. If you're going to be having Plumlee and Jokic down there, I find it very hard to think Clint, Clint Capella gets a lot of rebounds. I know he's going to get points from those lobs from James Harden. Um, Today, he got six points, and they struggled. They lost, so it's going to be tough. This team has to fly now from New Orleans, way south, way to the west coast to um, play Denver tomorrow. Some traveling involved and whatnot. I'm just going to leave um, those Houston guys alone for those reasons, all right? And that's that game. Milwaukee versus Golden State is a game that I'm going to stay away from. It's just that both teams has so many uncertainties. Um, as far as injuries, Michael Beasley and Kevin Durant are the two that's out. We can start on the Milwaukee side of the ball. They point guard and Ted Okumpo. I pretty much made my case for why I'm not playing him at the beginning of the video. He never hits value. Again, today he was in the 40s. In 30s and 40s seems to be where he liked to be. And that's not six times value so he doesn't fit Brogdon needs 30s he gets you 23 then 33 then 11 so he's too inconsistent Della Vadova needs about 24 
He's been 21, 16, 21, 11. So he's not consistent. I'm not playing him. Tony Snell needs about 24. He's been 13, then 21. 32, then 18. Two up and down. I'm not I'm not messing with it. Uh, Middleton needs about 40. He hasn't hit 40. Only once in the last 10 games. He's been in the 20s more times than not. I'm going to stay away from Middleton. Henson is min price. Um, 13 and 11 are his totals. You don't want that. Greg Monroe, you need about mid-30s. 28, 22, 23. That's not what we want. So I'm staying away from the Milwaukee team. Golden State, on the other hand, Steph Curry needs mid to upper 50s. He hasn't really been in the 50s consistently. He gave us some 30s and 40s. I think he's safe against this team, but in 34 minutes, he only played 34 fantasy points, so he's not safe against this team. The history isn't there. His recent struggles are very scary for that price. Clay Thompson needs 42, and he's been consistently in the 40s. Um... He's so scoring dependent too, man. I, I'm not comfortable against this team. The last time he played 37, he put up 36. And there's no one that I would replace Clay Thompson for. I don't have the space for the guard. And Conley, Tony Allen is cheaper. It's going to put me more in debt. I'm just going to stay away from Clay. Matt Barnes needs 24. And, um,. He had 17 last game. He disappointed me. I'm not going to go there. Patrick McCaw, they seem to love him starting the game, man. The guy sucks. He's playing 20 minutes, giving you eight fantasy points. He's playing 42 minutes, giving you eight fantasy points. Why they keep playing him, I have no idea, but whatever. Um, Draymond needs 48-ish. He's had 35, then 62. 29, then 37. So it's two up and down. I can't trust Draymond tomorrow. Zaza is okay. I like Zaza. It's just that my center spots are filled. He needs 24. And he's been pretty consistent. We take away this 14-point game, which I think is fate. He's had 30, 33, 27. And the reason that he messed up with Philly is because of the curse of the chalk. When a player is so chalked up and expected to do well, it curses them. But I think Zaza is okay for that price. I just don't want to um come off Rudy Gobert for... 72 is a deal, man. That's like a steal, you know. That's almost in the 6,000s. Why would he be so cheap against a good matchup? Um, I'm not messing with Gobert. And I'm not messing with Plumley. I love Plumley's role. Plumley, if word come out that um, I'm not going to take him. He's getting 30 minutes a game, and he's good for a point per minute plus. He's safe. His floor is safe, I think, against Houston. He's played them twice, 30 minutes, putting up 30 fantasy points. And the way that I see that Denver got him playing, I think another double-double is more than realistic. Um, uh, then we don't know. I think Fareed probably picks up minutes. And then Arthur might come back. So I guess I could put Zaza instead of Plumlee. And then just have a good lineup. What else than that? What more than that do you want? You know, it was perfect. It's the end of the video. Everybody fits my system. We got a completed lineup based on my system. And I don't hate anyone here. Um, it's pretty good. You got Wall, LeBron, Gobert, Conley. Miritich been doing okay, even though it's a bad matchup. But the minutes are there. I would probably try to um, upgrade Meritich. I, I just don't trust him. I'm going to leave him. I just want to put him down a little bit. Organize my lineups thing here. So 4,600. Someone that I like more than Meritich. I doubt that it's anyone. Ingle's been pretty steady in the absence of... Um, see, I could, I, could, I could get in with some Ingles, you know. He's getting minutes. He's a point per minute. Um... He's he's four times value consistent. He's about 24 in his last three. 24, 25, 27, 29. So Ingles fits. I think I'll take Miritich before I take Ingles, though. Um, uh, Fareed, if he starts. So it just depends on what the news come out with tomorrow again. Now, Fareed and his team only play. This is the type of game he likes. 22 minutes. 
he put up 30 fantasy points. I know they they easing him back in because of the um, conditioning. I think he would have played more than 18 minutes if that Clipper game wasn't a blowout. And in only 18 minutes, he's got us 21. So he's volatile, man. I, I think I'm just going to go with Fareed right there. Um, over Miritich, that's a certain thing. Especially if they say he gets his start back. and um, We know that he's going to get more minutes. Roto seems to think that he's not going to get minutes, right? They're saying that um, after missing nine games with a back injury, he was eased back into the fold. Oh, they're saying with Chandler and Gallinari healthy, Fareed might not be someone to consider. But while they're still on the shelf, I think Fareed is a better pick than Miritich. He fits my system, in my opinion. Um, why I say that is because when he's given the minutes, he does well. Now, 16 minutes, 16 points, right? So a point per minute. 18 minutes, 21 points. These two games, 10 and 14, he was never in the game. He probably came in some garbage time and... I don't, I don't want to count that, but 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 37, 28, 28, 28, 41, 37, 51, 21, 24. So if I'm guaranteed that Kenneth Fareed is going to get 20 minutes, unless they come out with something saying that he's going to be limited, they shouldn't. He's back at practice. I'm pretty sure he practiced yesterday. He's going to be at shoot around. He already got eased back into the game. They need to stop the crap. Mason Plumley is a center. So, play for Reed, man. I think they could play for Reed. Um, all right. So, let's see if we can do anything with $300 before I conclude. 9600 for a point guard. Let's see. Nope. No one I like better. 4100 for two guard. Uh, Austin Rivers, no nope. Crawford, Tony Snell, Tony Snell, an up pace matchup might not be a bad idea. Twenty nine minutes, he only gave us seventeen. I'm, I'm gonna stick with that. Eleven three for LeBron. Eleven three for LeBron. Nothing. Jason Smith, if he starts, is a lot. Gobert. 75 for Gobier. No. Nope. I don't see anything obvious. Um, 74 for Conley. I don't see anything obvious. 46 for Fareed. I don't see anything obvious. And Zaza for 4,300. Somebody better than Zaza. With more upside, right? Like maybe a Jermichael Green if he gets the minutes. Um, 24 minutes, 20. Nah, we don't want that. Against the Spurs, he's competing with um, Zebo, Zach Randolph. Nope. Oh, Mo Spates. We can do Mo Spates tomorrow, guys. <laughs> oh, boy. Mo Spates is the worst thing. Basketball. So this is my lineup. Play with confidence. Good luck. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow once I get some injury news and if I make any changes, you will be the first to know.